When I was a boy, my father gave me a piece of metal that came from a dead place. When I took it, I did not know if I would live. I did live, and this meant that I was destined to become a priest just like my father. Before I could become a priest, I had to make my journey to become a man. Take this. My father had warned me not to go east because that was forbidden. But I had had a dream to go east, to go to the place of the gods, and my hunger for knowledge burned within me. I saw an eagle fly east, and I took this as a sign. I saw three deer as well, one a white fawn. I took this as a very great sign. It is eight suns' journey to the east, and by the evening on the eighth day, I came to a great river. Across the river is the place of the gods, in ruins after the great burning. It felt like ground underfoot, it did not burn me. Here and there were the marks and stains of the great burning, that is true, but they are old marks and old stains.
How shall I tell what I saw? I went carefully. There should have been the wailings of spirits and the shrieks of demons, but there were not. The towers are not all broken, but they look blind, for the gods are gone. Wild dogs chased me, but I escaped. The god who lived here must have been a powerful god. There were wonderful pictures on the walls, and lamps ran by magic. There was a washing place, but no water. Everywhere there were books and writings, many in tongues I could not read. Soon I slept. Now what I tell is strong magic. I awoke and looked out to see the city as it must have been when the gods were alive. There were so many gods. Then I saw their fate come upon them. It was fire falling out of the sky and When I awoke, I saw the dead god. There was wisdom in his face and great sadness. You could see that he would not have run away. He sat at his window watching his city die. I knew that he was a man. I knew then that they had all been men, neither gods nor demons. They went a dark road, but they were men. I had no fear after that, no fear of going home. I was chased by the forest people for two days, but I escaped. When I saw my father again, I told him my story. We will tell everyone else, little by little. 
We will build again. At least we make a beginning. Here we are with Stephen Vincent Bennett. Ah! It's Benet. Apologies, Benet. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born July 22nd, 1898. Uh, both my parents were very open-minded. My dad was of the military background, and so I grew up in a lot of military pose, and my dad was extremely into literature. He constantly read me poetry. And then later in life, I had a wife, Rosemary Carr, and three children, Rachel, Thomas, and Stephanie. Very nice. Um, what influenced your writing the most, do you think? Well, as I said, my dad was uh, very immersed in the military, so I grew up just bouncing from post to post, and he would always read me poetry, like before bed and that kind of stuff. So our family was based around literature, and I think that influenced me, as well as the fact that I lived through World War I, and I died right around the same time of World War II. Mr. Bennett, I know this is a hard topic, but could you tell us a little bit about how you died and when you died? March 13th, 1943. Wow. I read that you died of a heart attack. Is that true? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, well, that is all for today. And here is Mr. Bennett one more time. Thank you. Here we are with the many actors who played John in By the Waters of Babylon by Stephen Vincent Benet over there. <laughs> so how you doing, Johns? Good. Good. Good? All right. So for our first question, how would you describe your character? Well, he's solemn and quiet and very intelligent. And considering he's been trained since a young age to be a dependable priest, it makes sense. All right, so would you consider John to be brave or just a progressive thinker? I would say brave because he went to the East blindly, not knowing much about the dead places, and didn't really process it till later on. But he always seemed so curious about the past, even at a young age. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely curious. He really revered knowledge, and he always wanted to learn more, and so he, he went into dead places, and he wanted to like read and do all that kind of stuff. All right. Well, that is all for today with our many Johns. And yeah. So now we're going to do the, the plot and the theme of the story. So the exposition is kind of when John is younger and he goes to their places with his father and he's given a piece of metal and it kind of gives you the idea about post-apocalyptic world because the metal could be contaminated with cooler chemicals and also John was raised differently and trained to be a priest and yeah so then the the rising action starts when he sets off on his journey and he sees an eagle and that flies east and he takes that as a sign that he should go east and then he sees um, a three deer and one of them's about to be eaten by a panther but he manages to kill the panther so that's a good thing and then after he makes his way you know mostly to the place of the gods he is able to make a raft and cross the river and then after that he gets well, at first, slowly chased by a pack of wild dogs. Um, but then he reaches the dead places and kind of shuts himself into one of the gods' homes and then the dogs can't get them for him. And while he's in the gods' home, he kind of inspects everything, like all of our modern gadgets. He kind of describes like a faucet, an oven, um, like a bathroom. And while he's there, he sees or, like a dead god. And then the climax. Oh, the climax is when he has the dream about how the gods were, and so he sees that they're kind of just men and not gods. They're just, they're like us when it was in a post-apocalyptic world, and yeah.
And then the falling action is, there's not that much of it, but it's kind of when he goes home and talks to his father about it, and his father's kind of cool with it, I guess. It's surprising how cool he is with it. Yeah. He's like, don't go east, but when John comes back and yeah, says, so you went east, he's like, oh, yeah. oh it's okay. Yeah, like, <laughs> like everything we believe is like different, but whatever. And then when John says, oh, we need to rebuild. Yeah. And I guess for the theme, it could be um, like there is a price for knowledge and there's a price for power because for the knowledge part, like he discovered this revolutionary um, thing for all his people and then his, all their lives are going to be changed, all their beliefs are going to be changed. And I guess for the power, it goes for the gods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They kind of destroyed themselves with their own power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We good? And that's by the waters of Babylon. <laughs>